Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Colts cast. I can do this all day. Mm. We are back with the Dove, Bob the Builder. Yes, we can. We are here to talk about everything and anything Indianapolis Colts. My name is Eric Smith co-host of the Colts cast alongside me as always I have co-host Jamal Lawrence here yo 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 <sighs> Jamal this was well hold on shout out our social media real quick oh yeah Twitter handle at the Colts cast we were live on it last night Instagram at Colts cast posting on that too you know not only will you see new episodes on there but you will see polls we run new content from us exciting highlight videos and anything in between YouTube is up and running. Please go subscribe. We also are planning on doing a question and answer session on our next episode. So we're going to send some information about on that. We want to get your questions. We want to answer that on the next pod exclusively. That's all we'll talk about. So check us out on social media. We'll get some more information out on that. Jamal. Let's get right into it. Let's jump in. One of the weirdest games I've ever watched. But we predicted it. We knew it was going to be ugly. The Colts yep. end up grinding out a 12-9 to win over the Denver Broncos on the road. I haven't seen a home team get booed so much in a long <laughs> time. <laughs> a lot of them were leaving at... Uh, at overtime, as soon as overtime hit, I mean, they didn't even watch the coin toss they were leaving. It was crazy. However, we did get the win, no matter how ugly it was. We're 2-2-1 two, two, and one on the season. Jamal, how are you feeling? Man, I'm too excited. I, I'm too excited, man. It's, this was, like we said, it was a rough game overall. All field goals. I mean, whew, it was a. It was a struggle for both offenses, but man, the feeling of knowing that this dub is in there and we are back. We're back in the running for AFC South now. And just, I mean, what's <laughs> up? What more could you ask for? It's wild. <laughs> yeah, that under, we were talking about it last, uh, last episode, you know, hit that under, you know, gamble responsibly, but wow, I didn't know it was going to hit like that. Zero touchdowns. <laughs> it was all field goals, all game. Let's dive right into it. Let's, yeah. let's hit our offense, man, because our th- there were some bright spots, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and we're we're gonna go over him first, because my goodness, he's looking like a wide receiver. One, Alec Boy. Pierce, nine targets, eight catches, eighty-one yards. My goodness, he made some beautiful catches, and the one I'm thinking about right now is that catch when he was coming over the middle over Damari Mathis when it looked like it was about to be intercepted. That was going to be Matt Ryan's third interception on the night. But Alec Pierce came in with the strongest hands I've ever seen. He could, I I don't know, he might be able to catch lightning in the bottle. This man (laughs) has blown, like, he's blown me away these past two games. It's crazy. I'm loving the connection, the one-two connection Matt Ryan has with Alec Pierce, the trust he has, especially after his week one performance Mm -hmm. where he had those few drops. This rookie is stepping up. I love to see it. I think Michael Pittman's still that go-to right now, but, I mean, the target share over the past two weeks, it's, it's changing. I know Matt Ryan likes to dish it out to different receivers, but, I mean, Alec Pierce is stepping up. Yeah, he is stepping up. And I, I I literally, my first thing I had on there, I said, could Alec Pierce be in the running for wide receiver one? I mean, shoot. I, he, I mean, anything's possible, right? Yeah, yeah, he's showing out. I mean, and, and, and as long as we're going to keep putting, you know, these Patrick Sertans and these guys on MPJ, let let Pierce flourish now. Uh, but, I mean, you cannot deny those strong hands. I mean, dog, everything that went up, he was just going for it. And there were some bad balls being thrown. 
There was some bad ball. He didn't. It didn't bug him one bit. He just went up and got it each time. So I was super excited to see him out there like that. I mean, MPJ, we can't sleep on him either. He ended up with five receptions for 59 yards. And, he, you know, he has certain on him most of the game before they switched him over to Pierce. So didn't expect him to have a big game anyway. I figured they'd be trying to lock him down. Um, but I'm just glad to see that Pierce was able to step up to the plate, as you mentioned, after that week one performance. I, I feel like he put it behind him, and it's just been nothing but straightforward from there. Yeah. I. Oh, my God. Got to love it. Got to love it. Deion Jackson, I thought, was another bright spot. Filling in. Mm-hmm. Especially with Naheem Hines going down. Ooh, Deion Jackson came out the gun. 13 carries, 62 yards, 4.8 yards per carry. I can't, you know, I'm not going to be mad about that. He also had four catches for 29 yards. I think he was doing everything, and I see why he is our backup behind Taylor and Hines. He's pretty solid. He surprised me as well. Yeah, what are the odds of JT obviously getting hurt, then Naheem with the concussion, and and, and of course Philip Lindsay has his homecoming return, but then and Dion in there as well. What are the odds of a third and fourth string running back getting a chance to to get all the reps in the game? It's, it's crazy, and and I mean he, he didn't disappoint. He was in there. He he took the responsibility, took the role on, and I couldn't ask for anything more. Especially, I mean Philip Lindsay against his yeah. old team. Oh man. Revenge game factor was definitely there. Exactly. But, look, we got the dub. I'm happy. Oh, yeah. But it's this is a broken record every week. We have to talk about the offensive line and Matt Ryan. Boy. I know y'all are tired of hearing about <laughs> it. Oh, I was wrong about starting Bernard Raymond. I really was. I thought he was ready. He was not ready. <laughs> he really wasn't. Four penalties in the first half. I mean, they were going over like LeBron stats of just how awful that was. And I, he's a rookie. I get it, but that that is not the debut I wanted from him. Really awful. I thought he was he was on pace for like eight holding calls by the end of the game. Matt Pryor, Jamal, <laughs> that's your boy. I'm gonna let you handle that. Hold on, what, let's get this Matt? shit. Let's get this shit. <laughs> Hey, all I'm going to say, first off with Ray Raymond, when you get a highlight video made of your holding penalties, you know you're in trouble. <laughs> I was like, yeah, <laughs> we were sitting there watching the game. Like, what, is, what are they oh showing this for? Oh, my goodness. Dude had a highlight video. That was, that was crazy. But Matt Pryor, dog, you ain't, you, ain't off the, you ain't getting off the hook that easy. Because I saw Matt Pryor. He, his stance, every other lineman was at least squatted down in a two-point and or three-point stance. Yo, he looked like he was about to try to go run – Go run a <laughs> run a fly route. He was standing straight up <laughs> and still got beat every single time. I don't understand what it is. I don't know. Maybe his mobility. He's just too big. I think I, he's too slow. Yeah, he's slow. He is everything under the sun except for good. I mean, it is rough to watch, dog. <laughs> oh. They bumped him to the right side. I said, all right, at least Matt will be able to see the pressure coming. No. Nah. Nah. Bradley Chubb was dusty. <laughs> Look, we it, even saw Big Q get bodied. Yeah, oh my god, yeah, he got he got ate up. <sighs> it's it's just weird, man. I just feel like I don't understand how just some small changes over the offseason can be a demise. I would understand had we had a new coordinator come in or you know, a new head anything, all the any true elements to make it tough. But when we have something small, like you lose a player and things like that, you would think that that wouldn't truly affect everything. But I, I because I know I pick on Pryor every single week. But when I see Ryan Kelly getting beat, and of course he got injured, so we'll talk about that. But before this injury, though, he's been getting beat week after week. Nelson getting beat week after week. Braden Smith, I mean, looking rough. It's just weird. It's weird that all of a sudden everyone's like, all right, I forgot how to play football now. But I am glad to see that they, they at least tried a different lineup because I couldn't sit there and watch for the fifth week in a row um, the same the same lineup happen where we have Pryor at left tackle, you know, Penner or um, Braden Smith at right tackle and just no changes being made. So it was a broken a broken change, but at least they put forward. 
Yeah, it looks like the coaching staff, they're, they're trying, they're experimenting new things on the offensive line. That's what we wanted. Yeah. But we also wanted some positivity to come out of it. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a great night by any means for the offensive line. Mm -mm. And I don't think anyone could have predicted the regression of this O-line, especially from the stout players we have, the players who are making the big money, the players are, who are supposed to be at the top of their game. We're talking about a lot of these players were on the top 100 in the top, uh, the NFL mm -hmm. on that video, on mm -hmm. that list, and they, they are not. Uh, they are not been playing like top 100 players. So O-line still got to get better. We're, I think we're going to say that every week until oh, – yeah. Until we start looking at some mock drafts, but <laughs> look, we got the dub. Matt Ryan. Hey, you want to see some experiments with him? You want to see what Nick Foles can do? Because he's starting to scare me, bro. I don't know. There, there's, a, <laughs> there's a lot I want to talk about with Matt yeah, Ryan. I think yeah. there's a lot we can say. So 26 of 41, 251 yards, zero touchdowns, two interceptions. He took six sacks. So... Was it all on the O-line? Well, let's talk about it. Pass rating in 60.1. Look, I want to say Matt Ryan could have avoided some of those sacks. Mm -hmm. I, I think it could have been four, maybe three. Remember when we were inside the 20-yard line, we were driving on them? Right in the yep. red zone. Yep. Oh, first you come on the ten. fourth and ten, or first and ten when I said call a timeout, and they didn't do it? Yeah. yeah. I, I wouldn't have been mad at a timeout right there, but they had time. They had time to run plays. <sighs> so we ended up passing it two straight downs. We ended up third and 38. How yep. does that happen? How does that happen? Garbage. Matt Ryan didn't get rid of the ball. Kept trying to be a hero. We don't want hero ball. We don't want it. That That's not what we do in Indianapolis, right? That led to two more fumbles on the night. We're not even talking about the interceptions <laughs> yet. They were so bad. I mean, these interceptions were clearly on Matt Ryan. Yeah. You guys cannot say this was the O-line's fault. This was the receiver's fault. He passed it right to them. I said last week, he keeps trying to fit it in the tightest windows. He's forcing these throws. This is not the Matt Ryan I remember. So th this was a forgettable night by Matt Ryan and the O-line. I really like, j just from aside from his, uh, from his play, I love Matt Ryan's leadership. At the end of the game, he's in the locker room. He's doing what Frank Wright's uh, supposed to be doing. He's yeah. hyping up the players, telling them we got to get better. I mean, he, he is that vocal hero in the locker room. I love that. I love to see that. And he recognizes that he's got to get better. But, man, I, <laughs> he did not look great last night. Mm -mm. He did not look good last night. He didn't even look maybe average. I don't know. Jamal, what do you think? I think that you are 100% right. And it's super weird because, like you said, this is the one time where I, I feel comfortable not blaming the O-line for every sack because there were a couple times where they held the line for – Four or five seconds, that's plenty of time to get rid of the ball. And Matt just sat there holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, and then starts rolling around and just goes backwards instead of just throwing it out. And second off with that, there was a couple of times where he stepped up into the pocket when he didn't necessarily need to, and boom, he got hit because it collapsed on him. So he could have just sat there. So, yeah, I, I, I will say that this is not all on the O-line for us today because they had some opportunities. But you know what? Going off of that and these long holds he's doing, I would love to see the game from the end zone view as opposed to the press box view for at least some parts of it because it makes me wonder, is our route running bad? Are, are our receivers just getting locked up or what? Because, of course, we can only oh. see the line and, and, and the quarterback because there's no reason why he should be holding the ball for four, five, six seconds. I was going to touch on that. I was going to say that. I think we were getting locked up to a point where he couldn't find an open receiver. Yeah. I mean, he was working through his progressions. I do understand that. And if you have to throw it away, I'm not going to be mad. Yeah. And we can look at film later on and see what actually happened. Because, yeah, like you said, we can't see it from the point of view on our couch. we got to go back and watch that. But that's why I don't really want to kill Matt Ryan entirely. But... From what I saw, 
Like his line can look so much better, minus the fumbles, ma- minus mm-hmm. interceptions. You mm-hmm. wouldn't be coming at him like this. Like I want him to be almost just like a game manager, minimize mistakes. Like we go through this every. I mean, he he's at eleven fumbles now. Come Which on, is scary dog. It is scary. If we would have lost this game, I probably would have been blaming him. It's it's that crucial. So. Shout out Alec Pierce. Shout out Michael Pittman Jr. Shout out Deion Jackson. Shout out all y'all. Y'all stepped up. But we broken record. Matt Ryan, Olan. Let's talk mm-hmm. about our defense. Defense held it down. Look gas near the end. But our our defense it shows up <laughs> <laughs> when we're underdogs. Yeah, they just show lying. up. Yeah, I'm not lying because I told y'all. And I'm gonna say this every time he steps up. Oh boy. Stefan Gilmore, Gilly Lock season. I remember y'all. I remember y'all on Twitter <laughs> coming at me and saying, he's washed. Oh, he going to get hurt. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Gilly Lock. I mean, has he not won us games? Has he not stepped up to the plate? Does he not look like a lockdown corner? Jamal, you tell me. All I'm saying is. Man had an interception and the biggest stop in the end zone in OT. I, I mean, the proof is in the pudding, dog. One interception, two passes defended, four four solo tackles. Come on, what what else do y'all want from him? Looking like a top five cornerback in the league. I said he was the most important addition. Y'all love to talk about how Mount Ryan was the most important addition. <laughs> how y'all feeling now? I love y'all, Colts Nation. But I also love me. <laughs> but really, Stephon Gilmore, he's looking like a stud. He's looking like a lockdown corner. He's coming up in those situations where we really need him to. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm going to be honest. The Broncos offense kind of self-destructed on that last drive of the game. That last play, we saw, I know you all saw, KJ Hamler. Was pretty Boy. open for a while. The Russell Wilson I knew could have and should have hit KJ Hamler when he was coming off the right side of the field. Instead, he went for Cortland Sutton, who Stephon Gilmore had. And Stephon Gilmore, Gilly Lock season, made an amazing play and ended the game. Just like he did in the Chiefs game, right? Yep. Run that back. He He's an assassin. So... Shout out, shout out Gilly Lock. DeForest Buckner. Stepped up. Stepped up. I love it. He must have heard us talking about him. Yeah. Two sacks. It look, keep keep doing your thing, DeForest Buckner, because we our pass rush was non existent that first Boy, half. Horrendous. I mean, I didn't, Russell Wilson wasn't pressured one time. So Which is so crazy to think because the the Russell that from Seattle, I think with no pressure like that. Yo, he would have just started zooting all over the field, getting easy first downs. He just sat in the pocket, just sitting there doing nothing, throwing ducks all day, which I'm not mad about. But, boy, we got lucky that he he wasn't playing well. Like, I, I, I mean, obviously the Broncos have just been just as bad as us. I mean, they're the third lowest scoring offense right behind the Bears and us. Um, but we just got lucky that he wasn't trying to take off and, and do – do his Russell style because it could have been bad. So shout out to him for being trash. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he had a clean pocket like most of the game Bruh. and completed about 53% of his passes. <laughs> Dude, I, I mean, shout out to our defense, but Russell Wilson was not on point no. last night. I mean, he looked, oh my God. He, he might have looked worse than Matt Ryan. Yeah, I think you're right, bro. I saw some passes, and I was just like, oh. Yeah, uh, yeah, he was just he, miss. I, dude, I don't he was know. throwing What's... at the pylons because he thought those was orange jerseys, bro. <laughs> like, I don't know what was going on. But, I, yeah, I don't want to take away from our defense. For sure. Yeah, Russell no. Wilson did not look great. Um, I thought we did a good down, sh- uh, a good job shutting down the receivers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, bro. And I'll tell you, man, Bobby Okereke, he, he's been looking good, man. Mm. Again, another nine-tackle game, one tackle for a loss. I, I mean, he's just... He's dude, everywhere. He, everywhere. Him and Zaire. Zaire had nine tackles as well. Yo, he he was looking good, too. It's, I, I, I like that combination out there. 
Our, I, I feel like we've said it before. Our linebacker squad is yeah. is, is probably our deepest unit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really like them. They they make plays when they need to. Rodney Thomas. Boy. Seventh rounder from Yale. Looking good. You like to see these late round draft picks stepping up to the plate. Because it's like, then we we uh, we praise Chris Ballard for finding these, right. these talented individuals. But I love it. He could have taken that interception to the house, but he tripped up. It's fine. Got hit I'll by a sniper, dog. Yeah, he got hit by a sniper, but it's fine. We, we got that pick. That's what we needed. But, yeah, overall, love the defensive play. We, you know, Broncos didn't score a touchdown. I, I can't say anything really bad about us. Mm-hmm. It's just our offense needs to step up when given the opportunity, when our defense is shutting them down. They just got to get better. They have to. Special teams. Shout out the special teams core. Oh, yeah. Matt Hack, I know you were out there. You was mad. You had to punt it seven times. I was for you, too. <laughs> but he kept it in the 20-yard line three times. Chase McLaughlin. Boy. Come on. Round of applause. Round of applause. I was wrong about you. I mean, you did miss one wide left you know, a week ago, but you were amazing last night four for four on field goals i think he hit two 50 yarders or three yeah uh two is a 52 two. 51 a 46 and a 33 i think yeah generated he was the only point generating colts player last night just you know we scored four field goals i think just special teams unit as a whole thank you yeah just thank you for doing your job you're on point you're probably the unsung hero mm-hmm not even just blocking the field goal, just making amazing plays like that. Also, shout out to Grover Stewart for that. Yeah, That's just a cherry on top. But just every week, day in, day out, I feel like they do a consistent job. You know, minus the kicking. We did have some kicking issues. Mm-hmm. But other than that, I feel like they do their job well. And they don't get enough praise. Yep, I, I agree. And and to kind of uh, add the cherry on top of that, we think of, because I'm going to talk about injuries here in a minute as well, but I think of these guys who have to make adjustments where Naheem usually out there returning punts. He wasn't out there. Ashton Doolin's usually out there on kickoff, you know, or kick return. He wasn't out there. So other players have to step up on special teams as well and, you know, kind of maybe be uncomfortable, get a chance to get out there on the field, which they hadn't experienced yet. So shout out to them, too, who had to make adjustments mid-game um, based off of injuries. We we had a lot of injuries, yeah, and I think that was one of the worst parts of this game. Absolutely. It was an ugly game, but a lot of our core players went down. Yeah, Naheem. I mean, geez, Luis, he, that he had a mean, mean hit with that concussion. I, I'm sure everyone saw him trying to get up, couldn't even walk. It kind of pissed me off that like no one like held no him up. I mean, him. yeah, they yeah. were sitting right there. They, just, I mean, dude couldn't even stand up. Uh, so I, mean, I hope he gets. I hope he gets. Getting some good rest because you get a hit like that, a scary hit. Uh, Quiddy Pay, you know, he was carted off with the ankle injury. So I'm, I'm be curious to see how much he practices practice here and getting some rest for him. Ryan Kelly, hip injury, he didn't return. I remember seeing him on the sideline a little later during the game, but he still has equipment on. But he didn't return. Um, and Ashton Doolin battling that foot injury. So a lot, a lot going on this game with injuries. So I, I hope that everybody gets a speedy recovery. Um, but it's 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 one of these things where when these injuries happen, this is the time where the next player can stand up and, and show out. So uh, you got to be ready. Be ready yourself to the plate. But I hope these guys get back up and well soon because we need every any and everybody we can at this point. Yeah, we. I, I don't want an injury plague team. Mm-hmm. You know, this, this is... This has been every year. We're always talking about, oh, we're always injured everywhere, every position group. I hate to see it. But, you know, we host the Jacksonville Jaguars. Scared. Next week. I know. Scared. But we usually play better at home against them. We do. We do. But it scares me because you know they got to be haunting your dreams. And after coming off that <laughs> big Chargers win they had, too, it's just like, Jesus Christ, you know, you, you got to be nervous. It's a division game. We got back-to-back division games. It's a lot to think about when you think about, you know, if you, you consistently lost to them, it's a division game. They just smoked a great, you know, a great playoff caliber team. So it, it's 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 tough. But what better place than at home to do it, I guess. Yeah. Next two games, divisional games, I this is the turning point. Yeah, absolutely. This is the actual turning point. So 
we're two two and one, we can still take first place in the AFC South. We need to win against the Jaguars and we need to win against the Titans. These next two weeks are pivotal. And I I don't want to go three three and one. I, I, I'd rather be four two and one. I mean we're mm-hmm. oof. That would look really good. Mm-hmm. Now, if we go two, four, and one, it re- it really might be time to to tank for CJ Stroud. What's up? Tank for Bryce. <laughs> I mean, it really might be because I I don't want to play for a wild card. If we're not winning our division, I don't think we make the playoffs. In my opinion. Yeah, I, I fully agree. And and you know just to. Just to add right on to that and kind of go into my last portion I have to talk about for today with that wild card. We don't want to be Frank Wright. Uh, Frank Wright, man, he he last night did the same thing as usual. Kept that, kept that little look on his face. You know what? He did get a little excited at one point, but you know what it was? It was a referee. He was yelling at a referee. First time I probably in my life seen him actually use some emotion. <laughs> I wish he would do that with the team, you know, get them hype. But he was just jawing at the ref, and it still was kind of like, it wasn't it? a lot. He's <laughs> got to keep his composure. You know, he doesn't yeah. want to get too riled up. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe he's a loose cannon when he gets opened up, so he doesn't. But I don't know. I mean, I'll believe it when I see it <laughs> because we need to have it. Like I said, a win is a win at the end of the day. And I and I think that coaching adjustments were made, uh, and which is super important. But I cannot, I cannot help but think, man, that was a sloppy win over the two worst two out of three worst offenses in the league so again it still just makes me scared for these next two games we have coming up because i think of the jaguars high power offense i think of what derrick henry just did to us in the last week that has to be in the back of everyone's mind so frank Wright, like eric said man this is this is the time we got to go in four two and one this will be our fifth division game after these next two games fifth division game so not we only got one more left after that so we have to we have to be prepared to go in and, and get these two dubs. So Frank Wright, show that emotion. Yeah, we can't lose every divisional game. Yeah. But let's celebrate, guys. For go sure. Colts. We got the dub on Thursday night. Long week ahead of us. Let's watch some good football this weekend and not stress because we already That's got right. the dub. Got the dub. What a way to go out for the weekend. Love it. That's going to be it for us, everybody. I want to thank everyone for tuning into the Colts cast. We release episodes bi-weekly. Go ahead and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or any platform you use to listen to podcasts. And we'll be back next week to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content. In that next episode, we're going to aim for that Q&A session. Oh, yeah. We're going to post some things online. Send us, DM us your questions, anything you got. I mean, we'll answer within reason. (laughs) And like I said, go Colts. Have a good weekend, everybody. Take care.